flawless experts who have all the answers. <laughs> That's not this podcast. Instead, we chat with professionals who love what they do, have wisdom to share, and can laugh at their own mistakes. I'm Mark, and I'm the host of the Workplace Solutions Podcast. So let's laugh, learn, and discover the joy of work. Boo, boo, boo. Welcome back. We are here with part two of our conversation with Katie Malcolm Carter, who is fully hydrated and ready to continue. <laughs> you can't see her, but she is trying really hard not to laugh on her microphone, which makes me feel really good uh, as a, a host. Uh, so we're excited. We're having fun carrying on our second part of the conversation with with Katie talking about fun and education and uh, experiential learning. So cool stuff. So I, as I said earlier, I want to leave a bunch of time to, to talk about some of your favorite activities. Let's kind of think of that facilitator hat. So what are some of your favorite activities? Let's, let's pick with different audiences. You're doing a challenge course program or experiential learning program. What's a favorite group for, let's say, middle school or high school? Favorite activity for middle or high school? I personally like to play Noodle Ninja. Okay. And That's I'll what... explain. Yes. <laughs> you, you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. <laughs> Let me explain what Noodle Ninja is because I learned this game at Bold, which it was my facilitation kind of start at Barry. And I brought it with me to my new facilitation place, Surgeon Adventures. And basically, it's like Ninja. So you all stand around in a circle and you jump back and you take turns trying to hit the hand of a person next to you or across the circle or kind of whoever you're, you want to target, you go after trying to hit their hand and you can only move, make one fluid movement. You can recoil if needed or move your hand if you're going to get hit, but basically you're, you're stuck in whatever position that you stop in. You stop your, your fluid movement. So Noodle Ninja, you play it, but you play it with pool noodles. And so you're just trying to basically smack the pool noodle <laughs> of the people in the circle. And you only have one of them. I personally play no headshots. If you hit somebody in the face, you're out. <laughs> but to each his own. I, I love that game. And there is a strong possibility that I'm the one that introduced that to bold. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you probably learned that from me. I didn't invent that. My guess would be that came from one of Sam Sykes's books, either 50 ways to use your noodle or 50 more ways to use your noodle, uh, which I believe uh, Chris Cavert is the other author on that one. Uh, both great uh, team building books that are focused exclusively on games. You can play with, with pool noodles. Like who knew it, is noodle ninja is one of my absolute favorites i used to play that with a lot of my transfer students when i taught that the transfer class at at, at barry so hey, i love those classes those were yeah fun. they were fun <laughs> all right so what about let's go older so a group of young professionals so our chamber defines young professional as 40 and under so <laughs> I almost made it. I almost made it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's, yeah. So, and just, we'll just say adults. For adults, it kind of, well, so is my group more active? Or are yeah, they we'll like say, we'll say active adults. Active, active adults. adults. Okay. Then I personally would probably do Whale Watch. Okay. Which is an, more of an initiative game or not initiative, more of like a, I can't even think of the word right now. It's a physical ropes course element. Yes, there is a there is a physical thing that needs to be there. Basically, it's like a giant seesaw, mm -hmm. but it's like not aggressively tilted, is what how I would describe a real watch. Yeah. So basically, the objective is to balance and not touch either side on the, to the ground with a group of adults. I try to get everybody on there with as minimal touches as possible. Mm -hmm. And then have them do different activities. So whether it be you can't step on the middle four or you can't, you have to get in a circle. My favorite is to get in a circle and then everybody has to sit down together mm. at the same time. And then I sit on the whale watch with them and we debrief the activity mm -hmm. in our balanced circle on the physical structure itself. So what are some of the topics that come up in those conversations? Oh, yeah. So we talk a lot about trust, which is a buzzword, but like, what about trust? 
Mm -hmm. how you have to like trust the other people that they're going to do what they need to do correctly. If you're the first guy on and you're going to balance out the whale watch and set everybody up for success, like me at the end has to trust you that you're going to do that specific Mm -hmm. job correctly. Trusting other people that they're going to like, you know, move in sync or listen to each other as they're moving across, which also would be like communication, Mm -hmm. which would be listening, but also speaking, which Mm -hmm. is something I like to talk about a lot. It's like (laughs) listening is not a one way street. And probably that like it, you do have to work together. Like it is, it is a team activity. You have to rely on each other. And whether we're in school, whether we're at work, whether we're doing group projects or not, like you're still working all together Mm -hmm. towards one common goal, whether that be, we're all trying to get this deadline in or this paper due or whatever the activity is. Like it's one common goal to not let the sides of the wheel watch touch the ground. Okay. What about with, uh, I don't want to use the word sedentary, but what, what about using a uh, adult audience that is uh, more indoor focused, you know, maybe in a conference room or something? What would you, what would you do there? Inside in a conference room setting. Honestly, I would do key punch, okay. which is basically like you have a circle or a rope or a hula hoop or uh, something that is, has defined barriers. And you stick numbers, one through whatever you have in your confined area. They have to be able to touch the numbers. I play it where only one hand or one foot can be over the platform at a time or over the circle at a time. And they have to be all the way out before the next person does it. You can't double tap numbers in succession. So I can't hit one and two. I can Mm -hmm. only hit one. Mm -hmm. And that everybody has to hit a number before somebody can repeat a number or repeat going again. So like... If I have a group of 12 and I hit one, eh, we have to get to 13 before I can hit another one. Okay. I would do that in a, I mean, you could do that a million ways in a conference room. Typically people run towards it and like mm-hmm. that. And then you're like running back. But if you're in a conference room, like you could be sitting in chairs, everybody around like a specific table and you're just hitting one, two, three. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of, you could do different groups where you could like <laughs> put 10 on one <laughs> section and then like 10 on another. And then you have like the floater numbers. So, <laughs> if you couldn't tell, key punch is one of my favorite activities <laughs> because you can make it super active or you can make it not so active. It really yeah. just kind of depends on your group dynamic and what they're willing to accomplish. Yeah, we used a key punch as an example on episodes, I believe it was 31 and 32 or 30 and 31. When we covered the eight R's of leading activities, we used key punch as an example of using that format. And actually, I just present, I just, uh, if you're listening to this, it was three months ago. But <laughs> I presented at the AEE conference, the Association for Experiential Education International Conference uh, in Black Mountain, North Carolina in November, a workshop on the eight R's and did a new version of Key Punch. So had a... Uh, all the, I use letters instead of numbers. So I had the 26 letters out on the floor, but I also had 26 bean bags that also had letters on them. And so the instead of running in and touching everything and, and coming out of the boundary, the, the time was to get the matching bean bag onto the the tile that had the letter on it. And so round one was to get, to get them all to match as fast as possible using Uh the the regular rules. And round two was to go backwards and take them off starting at Z, Z to a, and the time stopped when they were in the bag zippered shut. So, oh my gosh. (laughs) And I couldn't believe it. I had my friend Ken was, uh, taking time for us, uh, Ken of beach play. So we're, shout out to Ken, but he, he looked at his watch and it was the exact same amount of time. <laughs> what? And round two was definitely way harder. That's it was fun. Best. We were in a tiny little room with a pillar in the middle, which made it challenging, <laughs> but that was a fun workshop. Love, love key punch. That's, that's, uh, I love activities that are versatile, that can be used oh, yeah. for a bunch of different reasons. And since the eight R's is fresh on my mind, that 
as you recall, if you've listened to that, those episodes, the reason or reasons why you do something matters in, in this world of, of experiential learning. But, but I'm not going to rehash that episode. If you want to hear those things, go back and listen to it. Let's move on. So tell us uh, about a project or initiative, uh, something you did in your professional career that you're proud of. Honestly, I feel like I did a lot of smaller projects that kind of like helped build what stuff like became today, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, most of my stuff happened when I was at Barry. Shout out to Barry College. We love Barry. Hook and Bikes. Um, <laughs> proud alumni right here. But one of the things that we did was I was on the dance team in college which is, this is not facilitation and I apologize, but this is something I'm proud you, of. What I've discovered from doing this podcast is no one is just one thing uh, or yeah. one label or one category. And uh, feel free to talk about any experience or expertise that is pertinent. So if that's part of your life and story, you can share it. Oh yes, the Vicats. We love the Vicats. But one, th one of the things that I, I was a part of was the dance team at Barry College. And just how much like they grew as like I was, I was a part of the team was really really incredible so when I was first on the team like we weren't allowed to do football we were only dancing at basketball games and through the team something it was a group project we love group projects um, but we all worked together to then become we danced at basketball and we danced at football and now they even have other activities that they're doing now even that I'm now that I'm graduated but what I was a part of this team that like built something that like meant something and like our legacy still lives on as they are able mm. to do more things as a part of just a student organization at Barry and like other kids lives get to be touched because college students are giving their love for dance and they're seeing that at their college football games at their college basketball games even some of my friends because I what did student teaching mm at the Barry College Elementary and Middle School. Oh, so many of my kids would come and watch me. And they'd be like, look, <laughs> that's my student teacher. And even some of them are like, you know what, I want to do that when I get older. Mm -hmm. And so it's really cool to like, see that legacy live on, even if it was just like, I'm dancing on a basketball court, <laughs> just for fun for like five minutes during halftime. Yeah. Getting to see that grow and live on is really cool. Well, I can I can speak from my own experience. Uh, my daughters loved watching the Vikats perform, so they that was always the highlight of whatever sporting event we were attending. All right, so let's uh, we're going to ask my favorite question: spin the wheel of embarrassing moments. Tell us a story of professional failure where you're the one who screwed up, and what did you learn from it? Well. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, this is actually really funny. I think you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. So I was a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. So I was in public education and now I work for like corporate America and it's crazy how different things are because <laughs> teaching, I only had three days of PTO mm -hmm. with the additional like Thanksgiving break and Christmas break, but I only had three days of PTO. I had to provide evidence of what I was doing. So like I was in a wedding and I had to bring a, like a <laughs> pamphlet of the wedding to show not, that I went. Not, not like your own wedding though. Were um, you, were you, were, were, were you, were you allowed pictures. to go to your, were you allowed was, to go to your, I was allowed to go to my wedding. <laughs> um, but it was, there were a lot of hoops to jump through to take time off mm -hmm. and, or like doctor's appointments. Like we had to bring like a doctor's note. And so I had a doctor's appointment three or two or three weeks into my new job working mm -hmm. corporate. I work from home four days a week and I go into the office one day a week. Well, there was one day that I like couldn't, I, I had a doctor's appointment. So I like put it in under like sick time. And then after the doctor's appointment, I emailed HR and my supervisor, because this is what we did at school, my doctor's note. <laughs> and I said, hey, here's my doctor's note from this morning and <laughs> I learned that day that that is not something that everybody has to do <laughs> and like
like it had like you know the summary and like all yeah. the like I the things that I would have to provide and so uh, my supervisors were like he was like because he's like it was like my supervisor and the VP and HR and oh. the VP was like <laughs> I don't know why you sent me this. And I was like, what do you mean? I had a doctor's appointment. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, do I not have to turn this in? And so I got a really lovely call from HR that was like, hey, like, please don't do that. And I was like, but like, that's what's been expected. And she was like, no one needs to know this about you. And I was like, listen. So I accidentally sent someone who I had never met before the summary of my doctor's appointment. Oh, that's funny. What did you learn from that? <laughs> um, I learned that um, you should ask for expectations <laughs> when starting a new job. And that the education system requires a lot from you when you want to take a time for a doctor's appointment. Oh, man, that... <laughs> That made my day. Oh, I'm so I'm so glad we're chatting today. That's amazing. Every time I go to a doctor's appointment and they because they ask, you know, do you need a note for work? And my first thought is I stopped needing a hall pass to use the restroom, you know, when I graduated from high school. Why on earth would an adult need to do that? And, you know, if for those of you out there that are in a position of management or organizational leadership, you know, I think the fact that that is an expectation is, <laughs> I just, I, I get why, why those policies exist, but golly, like if, if you can't trust your adult, if you can't trust your employees to, you know, make <laughs> decisions and go to the doctor without, proving that they were really there I, th I think you've got bigger problems to, to sort through than whether or not so but just that that whole idea just I, it's so hard for me to wrap my mind around because it's like you know you're dealing with adults right like these are not children mm -hmm. i'm also so <laughs> one of the youngest people in my company and so mm. they were just like like are you a child like it kind of really solidified mm. the like oh yeah Catherine, because i go by Catherine professionally or at least professionally in this job they were like yeah Catherine's just she's just a baby because she doesn't because I don't know any. I don't know how everything works <laughs> so it's fine I'm fine <laughs> he still brings it up but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> I like took him to off the other week and like it just sat on my calendar like out of office and he messaged me later that day and was like hey i see you're back on like how'd your doctor's appointment go and i was like i am not required to release that information to you <laughs> the, and he goes that was the correct answer thank you <laughs> listen <laughs> so that uh that that uh, brings me to our new feature. Uh, please describe one of your medical conditions in full detail. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> like if that was a, a segment on the show? Great googly moogly. Um, it is not that type of show. Uh, who knows what type of show this is? I keep calling it a show. It's a podcast. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So we're running towards the end of our chat, but we still have a couple things if you've got time. Who is someone that has helped or supported you in your career? What did they do? Uh, and let's thank them by name. Well, I hung out with him last night. Isaac Phillips. What yeah. a guy. We mm -hmm. love Isaac. He was one of the people who supported me when I was going from college into teaching life and like being an adult and then going from teaching into now my, my new corporate job. He is a great friend and, and even he's my favorite person I've ever worked for. <laughs> I used to talk about them in like talking about how I communicate with my supervisor at mm -hmm. Sojourn Adventures more than I had talked to any of my other supervisors like ever. Mm -hmm. He is always just there to lend a hand. He really shows like what the hand and body of Jesus should be. Like he, mm -hmm. that's him. Like he embodies that. Mm -hmm. um, and it really just makes me feel loved and cared for. And I'm not just like a number hmm. in a system or just an employee who does their job. Like I, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm a human. And 
aside from like what I'm doing it professionally, like he's always checking in with me personally. Mm -hmm. And I just, I really appreciate him and his friendship and how we've gone from like, just like supervisor and employee to like close friends. That's awesome. Yes. I, uh, I love Isaac to death, so he is definitely somebody worth mentioning. Uh, so shout out to Isaac, love you, brother. We're shouting out a ton. I'm gonna have a ton. <laughs> the, the <laughs> you have a lot of mentions. Yeah, the 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 mentions on this is gonna you know f- <laughs> fill the character count. All right. So, uh, what's one question you haven't been asked but are burning to answer? Ooh, that's a really great question. I think my my question that I would like to answer is, it is, when are you coming to Rome next to come hang out with you, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> and what's the answer? Inquiring um, minds want to know. I'm actually coming this weekend. <laughs> are you really? Yeah. We have a wedding that we're going to at Frost. So. I'm going to be at the Georgia Facilitator Summit. You are, which was so disappointing that that was going to be, yeah, so I can never, so it's my anniversary that weekend, Mm -hmm. right, because I got married on the day of the Georgia Facilitator Summit, and now my friends are now falling in suit, like all, I have like two or three wedding anniversaries that are like right around our time, because teachers, and then it's like, oh, Thanksgiving break, and then you don't have to take the time off, but you are going to be, you are going to be there, (laughs) and it's not in Rome, I was like, wow, facilitator summit's gonna be in rome i'm ready like this is totally gonna work out and it didn't work out so uh for folks that aren't familiar uh we'll give a quick shout out to the facilitator summit the georgia facilitator summit is a open space style one day unconference that myself and a number of people created several years ago it is probably the best value for a single day of development because really the the entry fee covers your lunch and then the the host site and the all the the planners volunteer their time to put it on and it's just an opportunity for folks to learn from each other for folks to play and network and and a lot of folks get to present for the first time because open space is very mm-hmm. conducive to just creating on the fly. And so we are at work play. We are huge fans of open space. We think it's the best kept secret in professional development. And that is something we actually offer is, is the ability to facilitate and create an experience like that. So if you are interested in having your own unconference, we could not speak highly too highly of, of that. So feel free to reach out to me, Mark at WorkplaceSolutions.com. But yeah, love, love the Facilitator Summit. I am so excited. So thank you for bringing that up. And I do need to see Katie Malcolm Moose Carter at some point in time. All right. Final thoughts. And where can people find you? Final thoughts. Thanks for having me, Mark. It's been really fun to talk about my experience uh, with you today, because I feel like you and I know each other on like a, like, I called Mark my BFF when I was in college Mm because he truly is. But it's just, this is a really cool experience to get to share what I know about school and school as in like being a teacher and facilitation and how that path crosses because it does and it does every single time. And I just, it's really cool. Um, People can find me in Sugar Hill, Georgia. (laughs) Um, I work from home now with my two dogs and my husband's sometimes here, <laughs> but you can follow me. I'm Katie Malcolm Carter at, on Instagram. So if you'd like to know any more about facilitation and or bridging that cross, or you're looking to get out of teaching, I'm here for you. I got you. Whatever you need, you just, you just let me know. Awesome. Mark, do you have any final thoughts? No, I, I'm just thankful to have a time to hang out with you, uh, even even if we had to record a podcast to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> My guest today has been Katie Malcolm Carter, a.k.a. Catherine Carter, who is a community moderator at Incident IQ, a challenge course facilitator and trainer, and just a delightful, delightful human being. So thanks for joining us today, Katie. Thanks for having me, Mike. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave a review, tell a friend, give us a gold star, or call my grandma. And if you want unforgettable events and training that's fun, like for real fun, get started today at WorkplaySolutions.com. I know I want that.
Boo, boo, boo. Stop recording. Stop. Boom.